Hey everybody, welcome back. So in today's video, I would like to try to finish up this camera arm thing I got going. And as you can see, I've printed a whole bunch of parts for it. And to let you know, I have scaled back this to a degree. My, um, my armature wire, quarter inch armature wire arrived. And one of the first things I did, and you could tell I unwound some of it, I saw if I wanted to determine if it would support the camera out to three feet, and it will not. Now, the hollow fuel line is a little bit stiffer, but still, the camera weighs one pound, and it will not support it out to three feet. Now, the three-eighths fuel line will, but I'm just afraid that's so stiff that I'm going to break the plastic parts trying to bend it. So, I have scaled this back from three, from three feet to two feet. I have also made end pieces and I'm going to walk you through my end pieces because when the armature wire arrived I kind of had an epiphany. I had intended just to leave the armature wire floating around loose inside but then I found out that the armature wire could be threaded and it threads really nicely and it holds threads really nice. So then I got the idea of taking these and putting threads in the end. Then I thought, well, you know what? Because my original idea had just been to make these and put a quarter 20 bolt in this way and put a hexagonal hole and glue it in and then just leave the armature wire floating around loose. But when I saw I could thread the armature wire, I thought about threading this. Then I found these. These are, the, I found these down at Lowe's. These are little hammer in threaded inserts, and I really like, they're meant for wood, I really like this nice flange on the top. So I got the idea to make these, and we'll pop into Fusion 360 and I'll show you what I did real quick. They were really simple. I made one for each end, and all I did was back out everything other than the cup and the ball, and then and to put the projection back, I made a hole, and then I made it a hole big enough for the flange to sink into and sit flush. So that's what I'm going to do. Then I'm going to cut a length of this long enough so that I have about three eighths of an inch, you know, maybe um, 10 millimeters, 12 millimeters of this, you know, probably 10 of threaded sticking out past this. And you can see this thread's really nice. And the reason I'm doing quarter 20 is because. Um, the camera, the camera is quarter 20 in the bottom, and the clamp I'm using is quarter 20. In the U.S., I don't know how it is in Europe or anywhere else, but in the U.S., almost all tripods and camera mounts are, are quarter 20. So, um, quarter being the size and 20 being the thread pitch. So, let's pop some of these together. Oh, another thing that happened to me was I ran out of the PETG filament I was using, and I still needed three more of these. I switched to a different brand of black PETG and they came out too small. Same exact G-code. So I was getting more shrinkage with the newer filament and I wound up having to size them up almost 1% to get the correct size back. So let's pop these together and you can kind of see how it's going to work. They should all pop together fairly well without, and none of them are exactly the same unfortunately. That's kind of the um, kind of the problem with 3D printing. Nothing seems to come out the same exact precise way twice. But as you can see, you can pop them together. Every now and again, you break one. I mean, I broke one doing this, so you know, every now and again, you're going to break one. But who knows why that is? Some of them fit tight. Did I just bust one there. No, no. Thought I did. Sounded like I did. And then snap, oops, snap the ends on. And um, snap the end on this end. And I don't know if you can see it from here, but it kind of supports, kind of sort of supports itself if you hold it in the middle. If you hold it at one end, it's just going to droop. But I think with the ends I have around, I have right around two feet. Let me get my, um, let me get my tape measure. I had a tape measure here a second or two ago. I don't, so there it is. Okay, so I'm going to go all the way down to this end and down to here. 
and I am okay I'm 22 and a half inches did I lose one I thought I measured 24 the other day probably one went walkabout on me I'll hunt for it if not I'll print another one but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread this so that I have right about about how much I want because I want to bottom the armature wire and I don't know how smart this plan is but um, I'm going to cut this to a length and thread it so that I have just the right amount to go all the way through and give me what I want here and of course I'm going to have to heat and I'm trying to make up my mind whether I use something like this butane lighter and I heat this up and push it into the plastic or I heat the plastic up using something like this or whether I do a combination of the both but um let me pop in the fusion real quick let me show you the ends and okay then we'll put so this over together. in fusion you can see this was my original part that I made and um, I'm dragging with the wrong buttons because I've been using Prusa Slicer and Prusa Slicer rotates with the left mouse button so if you see me doing this a lot I'm having trouble shifting gears from Prusa Slicer anyway this was the original part I walked you through it last time all I did for these two parts was just go down in my history and just delete enough pieces so that I got rid of the ball or the socket and then I made a bigger hole in the center a hole big enough for that press in threaded insert to go in and I put a flan I put a, a inset in it so the flange would sit all the way down and flush and I did the same thing for this one just got rid of the socket end of it and left the ball end and just made the hole bigger and put that inset in so that's that is the totality of what I did the changes to make the ends I, and, and I've got other ends in here where I put in a hexagonal hole in the inside and one where I put a threaded hole in it and I was even concerned about making one with a plastic stud and threads on it and making the, the end out of nylon but I think this is going to work out really well so that's what I'm going to go with let's put this together okay I did found my piece that went runabout so now with the ends already on, I can't get the camera out far enough for you to see the whole thing. But now with the ends already on it, we come down to here. You put that there so you can see it at the end. And we come all the way down to the other end. You can see I slipped down there and it's bending on me. Ah, there we go. You can see I'm just about 23 and a half. So that's the length I was shooting for. This time I was shooting for 24, but you know what? I'm not going to get 24 with the size I made these. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the ends off it, and I'm going to put the inserts in the ends. Let's see how that works. I have a little ceramic um, coaster to set these on to heat them so I don't set the house on fire. And um, yeah, let's see how this works. I'm going to pause momentarily while I get the pieces undone and set up. Be right back. Okay, so I got everything set up here, I hope, and the reason I'm using a hairdryer instead of my heat gun is because I don't really trust myself with that heat gun. It goes from just slightly not hot enough to melting it on fire in a very short period of time, so I kind of don't trust myself with it. But you're saying, but Chuck, you have a butane lighter there. Yeah, I know frightening isn't it <laughs> so at least at least I can't set or melt this or the little ceramic coaster on fire and the ceramic coaster does not have its cork bottom on it anymore because I figured out the hard way that that will set on fire <laughs> so let's um let's see how this works let's start with this piece I'm gonna heat sorry for the noise I am gonna heat oh well will it not turn on there it goes sorry for the noise I want to um, get it on its hottest setting. That would be that, the noisiest one. And I'm going to heat these up really good. That almost gets too hot to hold on to. So um, bear with me. I'm going to heat that. Like that. I'm going to try and get that plastic piece nice and toasty. I'm going right over the top of it so it doesn't blow it all over the place. I'm going to pause here momentarily until I get that nice hot. Okay, I got that nice and hot. I know you probably can't hear me. I am going to heat. I can't do it with that turned on because that um, 
a hair dryer blows the flame of the lighter out, I'm going to get this nice and hot. I'm hoping that little piece is going to stay nice and warm here for a bit. And let's get this nice and hot. And let's see how this works. Alright, here we go. I heard something crack. I heard something crack. Maybe that's bad, maybe that's not bad. Well, I don't know. There it is. It's set all the way down in flush. Um, <laughs> I heard something go crack, but I don't see anything broken, so whatever it is, it might have been the interior, sorry, might have been the interior wall if it cracked, but there it is. It's set all the way down in flush. Let's, um, let's do the other one while that one cools. Okay, so the hair dryer just wasn't cutting it, so I have gotten the heat gun out of its um, chained up steel box in the garage where I keep it so it can't accidentally escape and melt and set things on fire. So um, I feel like that about it sometimes. So setting it to its low setting, and also that hair dryer was blowing way too much air. It was blowing everything all over. I want to set this to its lower setting because it's scary enough on the low setting. And you can see all the ends of filament, all the strings pulling away from it. And I'm going to do the... I'm going to try and get it nice and warm without actually melting it. And um, I think what I'm going to do is see if I can do both of these at once. I can't because the the heat gun blows out the lighter light. It blows out the lighter flame, I should have said. Let's, um, let's get that nice and hot. And then we'll come back with the heat gun. I don't know if you can see the blue flames, but um, all right, let's heat that up a little bit more one more time. All right, let's do it. Whoa, that was a little too much, I think. Ow, 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 ow. I need something to push it with. How about this business card? There we go. It's all the way down flush. Oh, and I deformed it. You see, that's what happens when I use this damn heat gun. I deform the inside of that. See if I can kind of undeform it. <laughs> damn heat guns. Yeah, look at that. I deformed that quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, I got that way too warm. I don't know if you can see it, but um, I deformed that quite a bit. Might still work. I'm going to give it a go. But my threaded insert is in nice and flush, and I heard no cracking. But yeah, that's my problem with that heat gun plastic. I tend to um, go a little bit too far with it. So I'm going to let this cool, and I'm going to come back and put that together. And while it's cooling, I think I will try to... Um, yeah, I'm going to have to put it together before I can measure and cut the um, the inside and I can always make it the armature wire too long with too much threads and then just cut it off when it's assembled to the length I want but I'd like to try and hit it right without doing that so let's let this cool and I'll put it back together and come back okay so I've got all my pieces made I'm right at my should be right at my 24 inch length or maybe half inch short of it when I'm done I cut my my um, piece of armature wire and threaded both ends. I tried to make it a little bit too long because I can deal with a little too long, a little too short isn't going to work. So let's get it together and let's see how well this is going to work. I haven't tried this yet. You guys are right here on the cutting edge with me. And oh by the way, I just dawned on me I should have used my new, the heat gun on my new soldering station that I reviewed here three or four videos back to heat these up because as you can see, don't know if you can see it or not, I deformed them a bit but they're going to work. But because uh, I can control the temperature on that heat gun, 
but because I haven't had it that long, I just didn't even think of it. So what I want to do is I'm hoping to get this rod and the threading the right length that I can just bottom these out on it. And of course, I'm putting it on backwards and you're probably laughing at me. <laughs> okay, so this is going to go on this end. We're going to thread it. Oops, we're going to thread it all the way down till it bottoms. Because that's going to control how much I have sticking out the end. And I think what I want is right about right about that much. Can you see that? That's about what I want sticking out of the end. Because if I go any further than that, it's not going to really make it any stronger, I don't think, and it's going to leave the camera loose. All right, so now we're going to pop that end into there. All right, there we go. Now, as you can see, that end is going to be a wee bit too long. I want that to bottom out, so I'm going to have to thread that down. Let me get my marker. I'm going to have to guess at this, and I'm going to say that's going to go on to about there. And I want, and that sticks out. <laughs> that sticks out. Oh, you know what? The threading doesn't go all the way in, does it? Uh, yeah, it does. Threading goes all the way to the bottom. Yes, it does. Okay, so that sticks out about eh, not quite a quarter of an inch. So that goes right to that line there. So I think I want my threading to be right about there. It's going to make it kind of kind of tough to thread with it all together, which means I'm going to have to take it back apart, aren't I? So let's um, see how tough this is going to be to do. Maybe if I thread one of these on here a bit, I'll be able to... Well, you know what? That threading does not go all the way down. It doesn't, does it? Look at that. That does not thread all the way down. That probably has a quarter inch where it doesn't thread. So this here wants to be a quarter inch longer than I have it marked. So from there, probably to right about there. That means I can thread it with it assembled, I think. Anyway, I'm going to give it a try. I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I threaded that. You can see I have my mount I want sticking out that end. As you can see, I'm way too long on this end, but that's okay. And as far as threading this is concerned, I've got tap and die sets. But honestly, the cheap, this stuff is so soft, the cheapest quarter inch tap in the world. I mean, you can buy a separate one and use a crescent wrench to turn it, or just buy a cheapo tap and die set. And um, just you have to grip the material close to where you're threading or it'll twist the material. But a good tap and die set will cut through it really easily. Um, so what I'm going to do is I am going to put this on and I'm just going to have to thread it down and I'm hoping that it bottoms right at where I want it right at when it's clipped on right but let's find out maybe it will maybe it won't we'll find out I don't know I haven't tried it yet so there it goes on Gotta make sure it's not turning the whole thing. And that's what it's doing, isn't it? It's turning the whole thing. Nope, there it goes. There it goes. Trying though. Don't break, don't break, don't break. <laughs> All right, I think I'm there. I think I'm there. Okay, I think I'm there. So, as you can see, I think, I've got, I think I've got a pretty good amount of ability to bend. So what I'm going to do now, I am going to shorten this in to where I, I'm going to make sure I'm snug down. I'm going to shorten, whoops, I'm <laughs> getting the camera. I'm going to shorten this in to where I want it. I'm going to find a way to temporarily mount the phone as my video camera, and I'm going to mount the camera and my clamp, and I'll be back, and we will see how well this works. Okay, we're on my camera now. I hope you're going to be able to see this well. I know my desk and work area is ridiculously busy and crowded, but um, you can see it here. I got it mount, have it mounted into the clamp. 
I added a nut on the inside of that so that I could tight, tighten it into the clamp and keep it from rotating, or at least attempt to keep it from rotating. I didn't tighten it very much. Remember that this, these aluminum threads, you can't tighten them. You can't put, you know, 50 foot pounds of torque on them. So you can see this thing is pretty bendable. I can pretty much get it in almost any angle I want. And it works really well for that. Here's the issue. If I mount the camera on it, and this is the camera that I normally use, this Canon, and um, if I mount it on it, and I should probably have another nut on here too, so I can control the position of the camera, and I just didn't bring one in, but let's get it on. I may not have left enough threads for that anyway, but um, I'm rotating down again. There we go. So I can easily do something like that, and that works really well. And I can do something like this with it, oops, if I wanted to. And you know, it all works really well. But the only issue is, is that wire is just not strong enough. Can you see that? That wire is just not strong enough to support the camera out to two feet. I was hoping that this was going to give it enough extra strength that it would, but it really Okay, so doesn't. we know that unfortunately that um that armature wire even on my even with my plastic printed parts giving some added resistance to it still will not really support that camera out at um out at two feet. And honestly, I did some tests, and it won't even do it out at 18 inches. So I'm going to have to make some changes in my next version. And what changes am I going to make? Well, let's take a look at that fuel line. Plus, those aluminum threads are really not holding very well. So what are my next changes going to be? I'm going to set the camera there momentarily. Is that even in the shot? It is. So let's take a look at that fuel line. Here is the 5.16 aluminum fuel line, and um, let's extend it out to, where did my tape measure go? There it is, buried under the pile as usual. Let's extend it out, and I'll hold it at two feet. Two feet is right there. Let's see if that will support that camera, the weight of that camera, and it does. Let's... Um, Here's the 3 8 fuel line. This is the 3 8 bendable aluminum fuel line. And let's test it out to 3 feet. Here's 3 feet right there. Let's see if it'll hold that camera up at the 3 foot length. Whoops. See if I can do this without breaking my camera. And it does. So couple of things I'm going to try. One thing I can do is I can put a separate, I could probably weasel a second set, of, a second piece of the armature wire into it. Maybe a thinner piece, maybe instead of another quarter inch piece, get some eighth inch and maybe I could put one or two eighth inch pieces just loose in the middle. But that still leaves me with the fact that that, let me show it to you, that that aluminum threads just, I don't know, can you see it? That aluminum threading has already given up the ghost on me. Is it focusing? I don't believe it is. How about over on this side? Nope, not going to focus. Oh, well, it's kind of not hanging on. It's just way too soft in aluminum. So what I'm thinking I'm doing is taking the fuel line and soldering whatever, epoxying a stud in the end of it and using that instead. Because that will give me both the stiffness and the steel thread threads I need at the end. So this was a fun experiment. A great deal of it worked good. I think my overall theory works well. It um the plastic pieces all fit together and work. My means of terminating it I think is a good idea. It just didn't work because of how how um how soft those aluminum threads are. But nonetheless I like the basic idea I think I'm going to try a, another version of it, and I'll be back with that. In the meantime, please like and subscribe. Hope you've at least had fun if you didn't learn anything. 
and I will catch you guys the next time. Bye for now. So just a quickie addition. My wife asked me if it would support the Logitech like C922 or C920 and there you have it. That is a Logitech C920 and it will support it directly out on the um, with the quarter inch aluminum armature wire and I suspect the threads would even be fine for something like that as long as you baby them. For me I think I'm going to go on with the bendable aluminum fuel line since it's stiffer and I am going to put steel studs in the end of it in some method which is yet to be determined. Catch you guys later. Bye for now.